We tried to design this van so that it was suitable for both long and short trips. So this van has heated floors. Snack drawer, best drawer in the van. So neither Tim or I had much building experience prior to our first van. Hi, I'm Katie. And I'm Tim. And this is our 2020 Ford Transit that we spent seven months building out and we've been traveling in for the last two weeks. This is our kitchen area. We really wanted a large kitchen just to make meal preparation very easy. Um, we made the base cabinet all out of Baltic birch. This is one of our features that we quite like, our spice rack and dry goods area, the push to open slider. For our counter, we chose the butcher block countertop. We feel like it just ties in with the wood of the ceiling and also the dinette very nicely, just kind of makes it all look very cohesive. Um, and gives it that homey vibe. We went with the angle at the corner here, as you can see, just to make this area feel a little bit more open as you come into the van, because this is also the narrowest point. So that was very important to us. We installed a large sink so that we could pile up a bunch of dishes in here and make washing quite easy without water getting everywhere. Um, and we recessed our pump switch with an LED light into the um, perimeter of the sink there. And we think it makes it look quite sleek. Next in our base cabinet, we have our 12 volt fridge, which is a Novacool R4500. It's got mostly fridge and a very small freezer at the top. The fridge component is great. The freezer is a little bit small if you're gonna be full time in the van, um, but we mostly have our stuff in the fridge, so it's perfect for us. Um, I will say if you are building a van and choose this fridge, be wary that it is really, really wide or very deep, so your cabinet's gonna have to be quite deep as well. For a backsplash, we chose to do a stick-on tile. Saves a lot of weight, but it actually looks quite realistic, so we found that the combination of the two was perfect. We chose to do an induction cooktop, and as you might have realized, we don't have any propane in the van. One of the reasons is because we have quite a large battery, so we find that it's enough to power the induction cooktop. Um, but also we didn't wanna have another fuel source to worry about, another thing to vent out to the outside or to mount to the van. Um, so we found sticking just with batteries was a good option for us. We have a decent amount of storage in this base cabinet. So the first drawer here is for a cutlery, just built little dividers to keep everything nice and organized. This one's just on soft close hinges um, and that's enough to actually keep it closed while we are driving. Over here we have bigger utensils, saran wrap, stuff like that. Um, and these are all on slam latches, 10 pound slam latches, just to keep it closed during our journeys. This is like our snack, snack drawer, best drawer in the van. And then at the bottom here, we have our pots and pans um, into this deep drawer. The overhead cabinets are also built out of Baltic birch, making them strong and um, lightweight. So we have dishes um, up here and then Tupperwares and cloths and everything in this guy. We have the overhead cabinets on this side as well. So first one is kind of electronics, drones. Second one is miscellaneous and toiletries. And then we have Tim's clothes and my clothes in the back there. So back here we have our RV size queen. Um, as you can see, we have these bump outs built in and that allows us to sleep sideways. So Tim 6'2", and it allows him to sleep in this area. Um, it is a bit of a tight squeeze, but we make it work. Um, we feel like it's far worth the trade-off of losing space into the living area by sleeping lengthwise. Um, we also have our controls for many electronics along the side, so switches for the overhead lights, as well as for the center floor heating, um, and then we have vents for our air conditioning as well. We also have the two half bunk sliders, as you can see, on either side, and we crack those open and have the fan on at night just to keep the air circulation going. So in this front area, we added the swivel seat, and that just frees up a lot of space when we're parked somewhere for a few days. It really opens up the living area to have someone sitting here instead of all being crowded at the back. Um, the other thing that we added was a ventilary headliner. So we store our window covers up here and then other essentials like bear spray and sunscreen and stuff like that, easy to grab. Um, and then we have our railing here just to put in our curtain at night for some privacy. 
The other thing we added up here is the Webasto heater. So that taps into our gas tank and it allows us to stay nice and warm on those cold nights. Um, it's really out of the way up here we found um, and it blows pretty strong to the back. So it works perfectly for us up here. We first decided to convert a van in 2020 during COVID. Um, Tim and I are both physical therapists, so we were off work for a little while and we decided that starting a project like this would be a great use of our time and a great way to see the world. In terms of total costs for this van conversion project, um, we put around $50,000 MSRP for the van around $50,000 and then we spent around $30,000 on the conversion and time-wise it took us around seven months of evenings and weekends. So neither Tim or I had much building experience prior to our first van. This is our second one so we had experience from that one um, but also growing up Tim and I both had very handy dads uh, so we learned a lot from them in terms of just like carpentry. Um, Tim's dad is an electrician so he learned a lot about like the electrical systems so that was very helpful. We did a lot of research before choosing the Ford Transit and we ended up deciding on it for a few different reasons. Um, one is the ceiling height. We liked that it was six foot seven and definitely the tallest compared to the Sprinter or the Promaster. Um, we liked that it was gasoline over the Mercedes diesel engines um, just for maintenance and um, well particularly for repairs but also upfront costs and then even traveling and having to find low sulfur diesel. And then lastly we like that uh, the Ford Transits are so common and that you can find the Ford dealerships all over. We chose to do a fixed shower in this van um, and it's actually a recirculating shower so the entire system uses around three gallons of water and goes through a, a five stage filter system that then filters the water and comes back out the shower head and lets you continue showering with the same water. We tend to change the water after six or seven showers and obviously at some point you need to clean the strainers and clean the filters so there's some extra upkeep to it but we really like the system. Um, I had a hard time finding much information about recirculating showers so I did a lot of research and then ended up kind of designing my own and putting together a little bit of a book about it. Um, but the feedback has been great and we've really enjoyed using it and just the ability to heat the water and then keep using that same kind of preheated water as you shower um, really also conserves energy and water in the van. So the, the shower pan itself is 24 by 32 and it's about six feet two inches tall in there, just tall enough for me to stand in it. And we use the Nautilus shower door on the front here. And the walls of the shower are sheet vinyl, so they're not actually tile. And then it's all just trimmed and siliconed around the edges. So this is our control panel and on here we chose to go with the Seamarine Pico system and we really like it because it um, gives you so much information all on one really clean screen. So if we kind of cycle through things here, it's a shunt so it shows how much battery is going in, power is going into and out of your batteries. It's hooked up to our fresh and gray water tanks so it shows us a percentage of how full our 20 gallon gray water tank is and how full the fresh water tank is so we really like that you can just monitor that here you can set alarms or watch it on your phone even um, and then if let's say the gray water tank is approaching full we can just hit this button here and it'll open the valve remotely on the gray water tank or when we're at an appropriate dumping site and we could dump the gray water next on the Seamarine is our temperature sensors. So I put three sensors, um, one on the battery bank, one inside the van and one outside the van, just so we can keep an eye on all of the temperatures. And then lastly, it shows you pitch and roll on the inclinometer. So when you're pulling into a, a campsite or something, I can pull it up on my phone and make sure the van's level if I'm uncertain. Next, we have the controls for the undermount air conditioning. So it also has its own thermostat basically right here. And then we have the Webasto um, multi-controller. And then we have our inverter on off and our shore power control, the remote switch right there. The neat thing with the recirculating shower and the bench seat being right here with the layout is that all the components um, plumbing wise for the shower are all under this bench seat. And so there's three, three gallons of water in the loop 
when we're ready to drain it, we just flip one valve and it drains directly into the 20 gallon gray water tank. Um, so it works out really well, just that it's, you know, it's compact right here and it's really accessible just by removing the cushion. Um, and it's nice, even if you're parked in the middle of a city and you realize the water's starting to get a little bit dirty or you're nervous about it, then you just hit the valve, dump it into the gray water and refill the loop. For our toilet in this van, we did kind of a hidden toilet underneath this bench seat. So this slides out on 250 pound drawer slides. And then if you do put kind of extra weight over the 250 pounds, then the weight just goes on the front of the cabinet here. We went with the Dometic 970 series cassette toilet. Um, a little bit of a toiletry area here. And the idea with this was that you know, maybe if you're parked in an isolated area with the window covers on and you're alone in the van, you could use the toilet here or you can easily lift it out and move it into the shower and then use it in there and bring it back. Um, we went with the cassette toilet because for us, um, using the toilet in the van is really just kind of for emergencies. We hope to, you know, use um, gas stations or washrooms um, whenever we can and just use this when we need an emergency. We put a ton of effort into this floating table dinette area. Um, we really love having a kind of a fixed dining area where you can just park the van, come back here, um, easily grab food or something out of the fridge and then eat here and not have to you know, swivel the seat every time. We're very thankful that Katie's mom sewed these cushions for us. They turned out really good and they have a zipper and everything so you can remove the high density foam and wash them. And the idea with the floating table was just that um, because it's already a pretty confined space, we didn't want anything underneath that you're bumping your legs on when you're getting in and out. And um, we find that because it's floating, it really makes it easy to get in and out of the bench seats when it's a, a pretty tight space in the van to begin with. Underneath the dinette here, we do have kind of a hidden storage um, because it's elevated for running cables and different things through so you can access all that. This time we added just a little removable panel that you can access this area beneath and maybe have some hidden storage if you want. For lighting in the van, we have four different zones. So the first one at the back here are the bump out LEDs and they're just on a switch by the bed here. And they're all 12 volt lights. Um, the rest of them are all these ASCU puck lights. And the center ones are on a dimmer switch. So it's a three-way switch. The one just on off is here. And then the dimmer is at the back at the bed. So if you're, you know, before you go to bed at night, you could dim the lights and then just shut them off without having to get up from the bed. The next zone are these two under the kitchen cabinets. And they're just on a switch right there. And then the last three over the dinette area are just right there. For insulation in the van, we went with one inch XPS on the floor and then have lock wool on the ceiling and all the walls. Um, we are from Canada, so we wanted to have the van kind of four season ready, really well insulated. Um, and then the added bonus was the heated floors um, just to keep the floors a bit warmer too. We found that it works really well um, with this combination of the XPS on the floor and the Havelock wool in the walls and the ceiling. Um, but because we have so many windows in the van, we found it really important to have good insulated window covers. So Katie made these up and they're um, a combination of um, easy cool and have lock wool on the inside so they're fairly thick and then they're attached with magnets that just <clears throat> snap onto the outer rim of the window and we find um, all together it works really well with the Webasto um, to keep the van warm. We wanted a dedicated internet system in the van so we went with the Epic Off-Grid router on the side here it's just tucked behind the shower and we paired that with the Parsec Collie antenna on the roof and so basically we just have a, a data SIM card or like a hotspot SIM card that we put in that router and it's been great. We find um, we can get like 60 to 80 megabytes per second internet speed pretty much anywhere we are. Um, obviously if you're in cell service and sometimes even like when our cell phones don't have service, we still um, get service through that. So we find that really handy to have and it's a huge bonus if you're someone that has multiple devices. So. Um, like because we're from Canada, we don't each want to get US SIM cards when we come here. So it's nice we can just have the Wi-Fi router hooked up and then have our laptops and our phones all connected to it. So anytime we're within say 500 meters, 500 feet of the van, um, then we get internet.
So this fan has heated floors and it's one of our favorite new features in this fan. Um, basically it's broken up into three different thermostats. So the main hallway here is on one thermostat and it's controlled just with a switch that can be accessed from the bed. And it's, it's one of our favorite new things with it because first thing in the morning you wake up, you can just flip the switch and in about five minutes, the floor has heated up. And then when you jump off the bed, and walk around, it's not cold on your bare feet. <clears throat> the second thermostat is for um, heating pads that are under the lithium battery and under the freshwater tank at the back. And that's on a separate switch, separate thermostat that's under the garage. And the intention with that was just that, you know, especially in Canada during the winter, if we were gonna go to like a ski hill or something, it's minus 10 Celsius, <clears throat> then we could have that on and just so you don't ever worry about your lithium batteries or your fresh water tank freezing. Um, and then the third thermostat is for the gray, the 20 gallon gray water tank under the van. And same idea, it would just be if you're traveling in the winter, you could turn that one on and then not worry about your gray water tank freezing. They're all 12 volt heating pads and they all vary a little bit with the draw, but the, the main one in the center would be about 10 amps and the side ones kind of all combined are similar. So um, for our battery bank, it's really not a concern, the power draw. And the big thing to keep in mind is that we're not heating the van with these heating pads. It's literally just, I almost think of it like it's a, a warming pad, like you're keeping the floor from being freezing cold and it's just nice on your feet. If we were to say what's the hardest part of the van conversion, it's kind of an ongoing joke because there were multiple projects that we'd be doing in the van and we'd look at each other and say like, this is the worst or this is the hardest part of the van conversion. But a lot of things are tricky because though the van obviously isn't square or straight, so you're fighting against the curved walls. Um, but a few things I think would be the, the push to open pantry, just getting every, every um, angle and drawer side just right. Um, and like the air, 12 volt air conditioning install when I didn't have any experience installing air conditioning or HVAC units, um, just figuring that out and figuring out how to run all the lines and electrical, stuff like that. If we were to give advice to someone converting their van, I would say research as many van designs as possible. So there's lots of layouts out there, but pick one that fits your needs and what you prioritize most um, to suit you with your everyday life. So back in the garage here, we kind of have our systems area of the van. So on this side is our 34 gallon freshwater tank in here. And then in front of it is the evaporator for the undermount air conditioner. So with that, the condenser unit is under the van and then the evaporator is up top there with ducting that runs through the walls. And that is a 12 volt unit. So it operates off the batteries as well. On this side of the van, we have all of our electrical systems. So we have a 3000 watt go power inverter charger, two 300 amp hour batteries, uh, Voltium batteries, and they're lithium phosphate. So we find again that the 600 amp hours of lithium phosphate is basically perfect for our needs in the van. So we don't have any propane, it's all electric, and the 600 amp hours of lithium is good for the hot water tank for the shower, the induction cooktop, and the air conditioning, and the heated floors. And part of that comes that thankfully, you know, you won't be using the heated floors at the same time as the air conditioning and vice versa. So those really big power draws should kind of only be one at a time. Um, we have the 500 watt solar for charging and then we also have 120 amp alternator charging when the van is running and that's through the C-Tech unit. It's the C-Tech combo. Um, so that's another thing is 600 amp hours is great for us because we tend to drive quite a bit and that 120 amp hour, sorry, the 120 amp alternator charging always tops up the battery with no problem. On this side, I put an outdoor shower and this is just like the sink, it's cold water only, but more of just like a rinse station. If you're surfing or something and you just want to rinse off or mountain bike and you want to rinse off, you can just do this quick connect right on there. And then we have a little suction cup mount that goes on the window. So you could put this up, something like that. Um, just another way to obviously 
you know, rinse off or shower without using the indoor recirculating shower. The other exterior upgrade that we did was the black Rhino mid-hill rims in gunmetal gray, and then the BFG KO2s, and they are the 245 75R16s. And then we did install quite a few windows on this van, so we put in the slider, the fixed slider window, um, and then the CRL half slider bunk windows on each side of the bed just for airflow. And then at the back doors, we also added the fixed windows on the cargo doors. So basically, it was so hard to find a van during COVID um, that we just kind of took whatever we could find and then added all the windows ourselves. So for the ladder, we just like using an extendable ladder um, for a couple of reasons. And one is security, so we don't have to worry about the solar panels or anything we're storing up on top of the roof. And then secondly, it's really easy to store this just behind the driver's seat. And yeah, then we don't have to worry about anyone climbing up. I designed this custom roof rack out of angle and square tubing aluminum um, and then I had a local shop fabricate it for us and went and got it powder coated. At the back of the roof rack here we have this deck out of um, composite fascia and we like that just so we don't have to worry about any um, deterioration of it long term and it's super light and I actually went with the fascia like the siding instead of the composite decking um, to save on the weight mostly. And then for solar, we have five 100 watt panels. Um, this area of the deck, it could be replaced and added three more panels for a total of 800 watts. And for our needs right now, with the big alternator charging um, at 120 amps, this 500 watt is great for our needs. But um, I think if you were gonna be in a really hot place where you're running the air conditioning a lot and maybe not driving as much, then it'd be better just to scrap the deck and uh, just replace it for a total of 800 watt solar. And then at the front, we obviously have our Max Air fan, and then we have a Parsec Collie antenna that goes with our um, cellular internet router that's inside the van. So we don't live in the van full time, um, but when we do travel in it, we try not to stay at too many campsites specifically. We mostly try to stay off grid and we just enjoy traveling to different cities and um, rural locations, um, national parks, things like that. We, we tried to design this van so that it was suitable for both long and short trips. So we really enjoy traveling in it for that. And eventually we will put this van up for sale and then we'll start working on another one. And we're always trying to improve and change small little things in the design. But down the road, perhaps when we retire, finish work, um, I could see us taking for sure a longer trip maybe down to South America. Thanks for taking the time to join us on this van tour. Once again, I'm Katie and this is Tim. If you have any questions for us or you'd like to learn more about us, our Instagram is at the trio in transit and our YouTube is Tim and Katie. Um, I know I talked a little bit about the shower, the recirculating shower earlier. And if you'd like to learn more about that, then feel free to check out some of our own YouTube videos on the recirculating shower. And we also have an ebook that lists kind of details every step how to do it yourself if you're interested in that.